Hello, I'm Derek Wheatley and welcome to episode 15 of the Weekly Wheatley Podcast. Thank you very much for uh, joining us. Um, we had a slight sound issue last week um, with some crackling and some distortion. So what I've done is I've checked my connections again. I'm going to not drag away off the microphone, ar- microphone arm that I was doing the last time, which may have disturbed it. Um, on a recommendation, I'm going to I moved myself back away from the microphone, so hopefully that's has solved the problem. I, I did some sound checks and it seems okay now. Um, so if you do need to turn your your um, volume up a tiny bit um, from last week's episode, that's okay as long as the sound is, is good. Uh, you know, thanks for all your support as usual. It's um, it's great and keep it up, keep sharing and liking and tell your friends, etc., etc. We had some good crack on the uh, Saturday uh, live segment this week. We had some questions asked. We had we had really good questions actually, which allowed other people to you know get involved. So that was good. So it wasn't just at me. They they were very general generalized questions that other people could answer, and we had a bit of a uh, laugh of that. And I showed my ignorance of dog breeds because I don't know that many. <laughs> um, we uh again this episode we're gonna there'll be some mental health stuff but we're gonna lean away from it again slightly um i don't want to bore you every week with same old stories from my mental health progress um it that will come with time when guests come on and we start digging back into it and obviously if if my um stories match up with the people on we can talk about that again so i don't think there's any harm for a couple of uh, a couple of weeks to maybe be a little bit lighter on that kind of subject um it's a mental health podcast but we're allowed to you know we're allowed to do what we want as long as you enjoy the content and as long as i'm enjoying writing about it and researching it it's all good Uh, a huge huge thank you to my mother for her uh darkness into light effort at the weekend she has made a contribution to um to to uh, peter house on my behalf and on the behalf of everybody else who suffers from mental health we are i am and everybody else involved with the organization i'm sure is uh, very grateful my mother got up at five o'clock or probably before five i should say and got into her darkness into light t-shirt and uh, made an effort to try and see the sunset not easy from her apartment she needs to move around the building a little bit um uh, so i i'm i appreciate that so much and my, my grandfather actually did the same as well um which is very touching um I want to give a little shout out here um, to Joanne Gibbons. Uh, She has a YouTube channel called Joanne Gibbons uh, where she releases a song every Saturday. Um, She does great cover versions. She's got a great voice. Um, I've told her before her falsetto was beautiful. Um, She has put up quite a number of songs um, please, if you want to listen to some good music and you want to su- support a, an Irish um, artist trying to get, you know, somewhere, uh, go to her channel, uh, subscribe. Um, it'll be greatly appreciated by Joanne. Uh, we're slightly biased over here on the on the weekly weekly podcast, but if you could do that, it'd be great. Go and check her out. Um, if you're friends with me on on Facebook, you'll have seen that I've uh, her last few videos that I've put up. Um, the uh, the the videos and they're they're great you know in my opinion um uh thank you to jur uh for a new movie poster for my uh, the corner of my bedroom uh where we record from um it's a poster of the film network and i love network top five for me I love the little details that Jar puts into the to the poster where you kind of have to dig a little deeper to see them all. Uh, it's my favorite of what he's done so far. I now have four hanging from the uh, from the wall here. Um, and yeah, it's my favorite one so far. And uh, thanks a million Jar for um, calling in a drive by kind of effort, calling to the house yesterday and putting it behind the wall and uh, driving off again and then I get out and collected it. Uh, we're, we really appreciate your and your your support too. 
So first off, we're going to talk about uh, a question that I was asked. And you know I love a question, but I love, you know what I love more than a question? I love a movie question. So Jake, my buddy and training partner Jake, uh, sent this question in. It's two. It's a two-parter. What is your opinion on recurrent movie tropes, um, i.e. dumb blonde in horror movies, the cop who's a day away from retirement, etc. Also, the Wilhelm scream and director cameos do you enjoy these or do you find th them immersion breaking okay so i'm going to go from second uh the second part uh first so if you do know, not know what the wilhelm scream is i'm very excited right because this is the first time we've had a, a kind of an effect brought into the show that isn't my own or a guest's voice right so i'm going to play what the wilhelm scream is I'm going to try and get this right I'm using my phone up to the up to the microphone so here we go. Right. So one more time. Right. That's a ridiculous sound. I I get it. Um it's the kind of uh, it's 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 so like cuz it starts quite if you listen to it, right. It gets worse than the second part of it. It's just a little 3 second clip of what the Wilhelm scream sounds like. Okay. So in a explanation of what the Wilhelm scream is. Um, the Wilhelm scream uh, was first used in a film called uh, Distant Thunder, uh, sorry, Distant Drum, Drum in um, 1951, okay? So it was a, it was a, um, a real, like, it's a Western, but one of those real cowboy and Indian Westerns. The name comes from... Uh, it's named after a character in the charge of Feather Ri at Feather River. Again, that was from 1953 this time. But again, it's the character's name Wilhelm. There's a scene, you, you can get it on YouTube. There's a scene where the character Wilhelm is on a horse. He He's following the, the, the gang, but he stops. I think it's to light uh, a pipe or a cigarette or a cigar or something. Someone calls back Wilhelm. And then he gets an arrow into the leg and there's that screen comes out okay now it it started with that just as a sound effect that people loved it quickly turned into a, a jo an in joke it's been used in almost well over 400 they say 439 films on wikipedia now i don't know when that was put into wikipedia um it's probably more now no doubt it's been used in things like star wars indiana jones it's been used in pixar films um all those uh, lovely animated films that big scream as featured um it's also been used in video games like grand theft auto and, and red Dem red dead redemption it's very much uh, for it's very much for film nerds uh movie buffs to pick up on uh to answer jake's question the Wilhelm scream, I love it. I love it because the thing, like, it probably goes unnoticed for me 90% of the time. But there is moments where I've f known, oh, that's the Wilhelm scream. I've gone in to check if it is actually the Wilhelm scream, if it's used, like, you know, go on Google, see if it's used in that film. I do like the kind of nerdy aspect. I do like the wink, wink, nudge, nudge kind of aspect to it. It doesn't take me out of the film and in, 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 it probably makes me respect the film even more if it uses it. Uh, if you want to hear the Wilhelm scream, actually, for people in a really popular film, uh, obviously I've read out Indiana Jones, Star Wars, but actually in The Force Awakens it uses it. They use it a lot of the time when someone's being shot or when someone's falling down a cliff because if you hear, you've heard I played the clip three times now, it's very good for people falling down the cliff because it, it, it rises and falls in that three seconds. And um, so I uh, really, really like the Wilhelm scream. Um, as far as director cameos, I, I've spoken a bit about Tarantino and how he does remove me from scenes and he does break the, the concentration that I have when I'm, you know, du uh, you know, dug into a film like that. He just doesn't do it for me. It's very obvious that, you know, you just feel that he's on his way. <laughs> That's the worst thing about it. You just kind of go, oh, you know, Tarantino's going to pop out in the middle of this and wreck everything. Um, I say wreck everything. It doesn't wreck the film. It just takes me out of it for a moment, and you know you don't you you don't want that. Um, Hitchcock is of course an exception. Hitchcock made it his his uh, you know his little gimmick to appear in 
his own films and for you to kind of like you know like the Wilhelm scream to kind of tr try and find where he is um wh where did he appear in the birds where did he appear in, in psycho he's in those he's just walking his dog in one look he's getting on a, a bus in another um i think he's in the bird store in the birds but I, I could be wrong on that it's been a while since i've seen it but um i think they're fun uh, uh you know and again just little in jokes like that are always fun um Talking of cameos, I think Martin Scorsese's cameo in Taxi Driver is incredible because it's he's in the he's if you don't know the scene he's in the back of the 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 taxi he's looking up at apartment building building and De Niro's character uh, Travis Bickle's getting kind of frustrated and you know um you know he doesn't know what's going on and then I won't say it on this because this is a family friendly show but. Um, he uh, Scorsese's character explains why he's there and his frustrations and things and I just think although his he mightn't be a great actor I do think that his um, his performance is intense enough to kind of really really add to the scene so I really like that uh, little cameo he has in that um, I, I've written Mel Brooks down here actually because he's not always a cameo but he does appear in certain films as a cameo and he's just a funny guy so it it adds um so i don't mind directors appearing as long as there's a reason for it uh rather than uh, like it's it's to propel the film rather than just a little ego trip you know um there has to be there, it has to propel the film in some way and that's why i speak of of scorsese's because i think i i do think it does because all of a sudden you see that pickle isn't the um isn't the only maniac in the city and I think that's a very interesting kind of uh, flip of the of the script, um, uh, Paul Schrader script, and uh, I do I do love it. Um, so uh, also on the movie trope, so I'll just give you a couple examples. Um, we could have loads here, so I'm going to use uh, two of uh, Jake's examples, and I'm going to use one of my own here. Um, I hate the dumb blonde uh, trope, uh, not just in horror films, but in any film. Um, because it it it, it perpetu perpetuates there we go you obviously have one bad uh me messing up a word uh, to really get the podcast going so uh it perpetuates the the myth um that blonde women are dr are dumb and i think that has helped in the whole idea of that and how you know the dumb blonde jokes etc et they're just used um I think because film is so prevalent in in you know in culture that they've used this dumb blonde joke so much or sorry the dumb blonde trope so much that it's it's kind of it's bled into into uh, into society and into our 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 way of thinking about um women um and blonde women um it's it's very lazy writing uh, i i don't think it happens as much now uh, than even it did back in say the two thousand two thousands. Say to my father, he'd be very unhappy me saying thousands. Um, and the you know, you and in the horror film, you know that they're they're gonna die die first. Um, it's like you know that the the trope of the token black guy in a horror film. You know that they're not gonna last. They're not gonna be the hero again. I think that's improving. But I do think that was a regular feature through the the eighties, nineties, and two thousands that the 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 token black guy was going to be there just to have some diversity in the film, but he wasn't going to last. He was never going to be the hero, and I I like to think that's improving. Um, and it'll o only improve when you know when there's more di diversity behind the camera, when there's more um black screenwriters and directors, uh, people like Jordan Beale you know uh, are given the chance and i think it will improve that way um jake also talks about police officer ready to retire it is a very uh it's a it's a very um well used trope um but i can see the reasons for this like experience is, is the key to the to catching say a super villain there's always a super villain they're after in a film um and when the the, the retiring officer teams up with the, the young rookie like say in um seven uh you kind of get the perfect team and the balance they play off each other uh, i think there's a isn't there um isn't there a, a retiring officer in falling down the michael douglas film i think there is 
So I do think it it works. Um, uh, do you know what, Jake? I have more of a I have more of a problem with the line, and this is used so much. The line, "I'm too old for this shit." How often have you heard that in a film? And I think that can occur uh, in line with the uh, the retiring police officer to kind of really kind of put a stamp on what they're trying to get across there and i you know i have considered turning films off for the offense of i'm too old for this shit i because it's just such lazy writing um i think they use it in lethal weapon i might be wrong i haven't seen them all and they're not my type of films i haven't seen them in a long time so the police have are ready to retire i see i see the reason for it um i'm not against it so I, I added one here. So the person in the horror movie who goes to investigate the noise or the shadow or, you know, something falling off the wall, whatever it is, okay. We all scream for them not to do it or to, you know, to just turn and run the other way because we're all thinking, well, I would never go near a noise. Like, I'm not an idiot. I just get out there. Right. That is exactly what you should do in a situation. Take that to the bank that's my advice to you if there's any situation like that i hope there isn't but just run right but if in a film the person doesn't move towards the noise right and they turn and run away the film relies on that curiosity 100 percent. because if they all turned and ran or drove to the police station right for for instance um there'd be no horror they'd just be like a police officer Arriving at the house, stalkers in the attic, arrest stalker, end of film after 10 minutes. Now, what what kind of film would that be? The horror movie relies on curiosity. It relies on um, bravery to an extent to propel the film forward. It needs that, that trope as such. Um, the investigation has to happen in order for the the killer to appear for the for the first time for the first time maybe for the for the person who's being hunted to either see that the killer's there and then get away or be you know killed but uh, it relies on that trope so whenever you see a film next and you think run get away just think of how dull the film would be without that curiosity fusion training center monksland at long a place to train in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, kickboxing, martial arts and CrossFit. A great atmosphere with experienced coaches and a real sense of community. If you want to join the team, find us on P Facebook at Fusion Training Centre or drop in for a chat. Fusion Training Centre. Train like a warrior. Messed it up a little bit. Obviously you can't drop in at the moment, but I think kind of the great news about these phases that is that martin has has been coming up with a plan to get uh, the show on the road again if you have been listening to this and you've heard the adverts and things and you think i oh, wouldn't mind trying crossfit or wouldn't mind trying any of the martial arts that are done in there come in and give it a shot uh you know help out local businesses martin would appreciate it a lot there's a great, like I say, it's a great atmosphere. You'll make great friends and it's just a place that you really want to keep going back to. And I'm going to, you know, a special shout out to Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, which will take a while, obviously, to get back to fully because it's, it's obviously, it's a contact, um, a contact sport. Um, it'll, it'll really, it'll actually change the way you look at things and, uh, it, it's it's not just a physical thing it definitely uh, makes your brain work and think differently and you know when we come out of this don't go back to the same old crack you were at beforehand you know try something new and if you do think it's going to be something a, a sport that you're going to try or you know you're going to pursue fitness or whatever it is if it's in that line and, it, and it's in fusion please call in uh, say hello to me and john and uh, yeah so like come in make new friends and start something different it's it's great um i cannot wait for the place to open up again and it's going to be it's going to be soon um i'm not going to say here because it's martin's thing but um there'll be some exciting news to come and it's great so um 
I was asked to speak a little bit about, uh, actually by Paul, uh, to speak a bit about positive and negative people. Um, so I'll speak a bit about positive, probably speak more about positive than negative because, you know, they're the people we want on our side. Um, I do think there's a difference in what I would call a positive person. I think there's the, the completely positive person, you know, the almost unnervingly positive person. And we, you know, and I'm not having a go at those people. It's just, it's so different to me, my way of thinking that I do get a little bit, um, uh, freaked out is not the right word, but I do, I do get kind of uncomfortable with it. So I think the, when you switch it, I think someone like, you know, the positive person for you, so that they're a positive influence on your life. And, and that person doesn't necessarily have to be a hundred percent positive person all the time because we all, well, not all, you know, 99% of us have our doubts and our down days and our negative thoughts and things that creep in. We absolutely have those and, and we heavy uh, like thinkers will be, they can be the positive, most positive people in your life, you know, because they know you well and they want you to be the best you can be, like the best version of yourself to sound kind of like an American um, meme or something. But, you know, they, they want you to be as good as you can be and they want to help you with that. Um, like the, the completely positive one is, is, is can be kind of wearing on you. You know, it, it can it can be, you know, you know, the kind of the, the full on inspirational quotes and, you know, the kind of the beaming smile all the time. It just seems a little bit um, if for someone who can't get there, it seems false, even though I'm sure it's not. I it just for someone who can never be like that, it just seems like a stretch that someone could be that could be like that. If you know what I mean, um, and and like the the number two, the positive for you is the person that you look forward to seeing. You know, um, like someone you feel sad about leaving. If you, you know their company was is so rewarding that when you come away from it, you're you've still you're still kind of fulfilled uh, by that contact and that talk that you've had or whatever it is but you know that there's a kind of emptiness because you mightn't see them for another day or two and and that's um that's what you need in your life everybody needs those kind of people you know actually just speaking on that you know we had calvin on the show if you if you go back i think it's episode six and or is it episode five maybe sorry calvin you're episode five or six all right um if you go back to listen to Calvin, he's one of those people like, and I, I think I, we spoke about that positivity. Well, we definitely spoke about the positivity when he was on, when he was on the show, but I don't think we spoke about the the overly positive people who are, you know, there's there's no chinks in the armor and it's just like a completely alien thing to most people. But, you know, Calvin's the kind of person who who you when you come away from Calvin you Calvin you do feel a kind of a balance you feel kind of uh, you know uh, it's a huge benefit on you um you know I have the same with uh, I have the same with Josh uh, and Josh is a deep, uh, deep thinker and he's he's very much uh, you know he's a, he has his own um anxieties and worries just like we all do but I will come away from Josh feeling better because he he's, he's a positive influence on me he can if I have problems I can talk to Josh about them and such is the way Josh is and his emotional intelligence that he has, he can rationalize a lot of the things that I have a problem with and he can, he can make me, my, like I talk about CBT, about the mind wandering to a different, or not wandering so much as the, the, the mind taking a different path. Josh can do that for me. Um, and you know, they are the people that you need to have around and you need to show their, you, that you appreciate them. And I think Josh knows I do. I don't think he needs me to talk about it on the podcast to make him feel that he's, that he's wanted uh, or needed, like, you know, um, so he knows this, but I just, I'm just trying to put a point, across, put the point across that that's, they're the people you need to keep around you. Um, and they, they, you know, you let them know that they're the positive influence, let them know that they have that positive influence in your life. Because it will benefit you both. It'll benefit, um, it'll benefit you to let them know because uh, of how important, you know. It's nice to feel important in somebody's life. You know, if someone tells you that, 
you know you have some level of import in their life and that's a good feeling for you and it makes you feel kind of warm about your you know it makes you feel good about yourself and you feel like you're doing something right um and it'll benefit them because it'll show them that they're important and that they they're doing they're doing good work and you know it, it, it does draw you closer as friends if you have the intelligence um if you have that uh, special bond of being able to just say anything to each other that's the whole point of being friends and the positivity try and be positive on each other's lives um you know it's not just about i well i hope it's not that just josh is just the one that's giving me all the advice and helping me out i hope i'm doing the same for him and for for other people who are who are who are close with me um you know it, it's it'll create that kind of thing will you know it won't just rub off the positivity won't just rub off um on that person or on, on you uh, it'll make it'll make you feel better um it'll create a positive outlook in you um it'll make you see that those people will make you see the good points in yourself and if you see the good points in yourself and you're you're feeling good and you're more positive than you normally are you can then pass that on to other people and then you can you can use the like the levels of emotional intelligence that people have shown you and you can use that to help someone else who may be struggling you know it and it it it's um it just goes and works its way down the line um i think this kind of thing comes with age of course and i don't mean <laughs> make myself sound old or anything but it definitely comes with age this kind of levels of emotional intelligence and the 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 experiences that you have been through have taught you things and the people that you have learned from have probably even taught you more than that you know um so you take all that in and you become i'm i'm not a, I'm, I'm look i'm more half a glass half empty kind of person but i feel that i can give good advice you know especially when someone approaches me about mental health problems or difficulties that they're having i think i can give good advice on that but i've learned from other people and the way they have helped me and the, the way they have handled me when i've been going through a really rough patch and that's where the um the importance of it comes in that emotional intelligence that maturity to see um what you have been shown what you have been taught by other people that you can pass on to others um and you, like think about the positive think about the people who have had the positive influence on your life um and try to make like a daily check-in with them like whether it's a text or even a call because that's only going to benefit both of you um because if you even when you're when you're having a good day and you, i'm talking to people now with, with mental health problems even if you're having a good day you feel you're having a good day there is no harm in still checking in don't just think well i don't need that person now you will always need that person and i think to have that little top up uh, of positivity or just a general chat about whatever it is especially during you know the the times at the moment um just have that little top up and have that little chat chat with that person and connect with them because their positivity will only benefit you um so a slight little bit on negativity and negative people like we all know uh, negative people and we all have negative people in our lives you know especially with with the uh, social media knocking around as well because it, it, it's just one of those things that is there remember the block button and not block even unfollow button on on social media just just click unfollow if if the if those posts are coming in thick and fast just unfollow them because it's not going to do your mental health any good if you're just staring at the screen and it's something that's bothering you every time they post and if they're a particular particularly busy person online and on their social media accounts you know it's doubling tripling the the level of of negativity that you have in your life and you don't need that so so always remember that the unfollow um button is there and use it if you have to um it's your social media account remember that it's not theirs they have they still have all those other people that are going to read it you know it's not the end of the world if you if you unfollow someone um like we all have someone negative in in our lives and it's it's a shame but we can't everybody's different 
You can't just root them out because, you know, especially if they're a family member, that's just, it's just what we have to, we have to deal with. We can turn them into something that they're not. But, you know, you can limit the time spent. Um, you can find ways of working, working what they are giving you out of your mind as soon as it comes in. You can overload it with positive thoughts to to kind of uh, to squash that that negativity. I recently, well, not recently, actually, it was, it was a little while back, but I had an experience like a fr just a friendship experience with, uh, with a quite a, a nice person, but a negative person. So you kind of you don't notice someone's negative straight away because, you you know, first impressions, um, nobody's ever showing their true selves in neg in first impressions, you know, and um, if you've do if you don't know them as in online and things like that, that's, you know, you don't have any indicators of what they're they're really like. So so it kind of went on and uh, I was friends and we'd, you know, meet up the odd time and, you know, uh, text each other, just chat away, like just uh, there was some um, commonalities there. But it was a, a lot of it was kind of back and forth and I started to see some sort of a if I if you, if you make a joke and it's clearly a joke. I know jokes are lost, especially when they're in text form. Um, but they're, you know, they were they, in the context of the conversation. They were very much a joke. They couldn't be really misinterpreted unless somebody really wanted to find something else in them. And I get my head bitten off then all of a sudden. And I was kind of thinking, Jesus, you know calm it down a bit so it kind of went on and you know you'd meet up with the person you'd be having a laugh and then all of a sudden you'd say something and it's like the end of the world and you get you kind of told off you know and this um, this is you know like i said it's not that long ago so i'm in my 30s and you get told off and you're kind of going that's not how things are supposed to be but again you let it go because they're you know it's a new friendship and it's nice to meet new people and be friends with people and then there was a, it became where I felt really strange about it, really strange about meeting up with the person because I felt I was walking on eggshells and I had to wa watch everything I said. And even if I was never saying anything too controversial as such when it came to, to either of us, I just was just getting my head bitten off and it was so wearing that I just had to get out of there. And that was the whole thing. I, I probably stuck in a bit too long than I should have, but you just try and give that person the benefit of the, of the doubt and give them a little bit of a chance. But getting your head bitten off is never fun. Walking on eggshells in a, in a, in a bloody coffee shop or a, a pub or wherever it was. And what's, you know, that's, that's not good for your soul, for your mind, for whatever you want, whatever way you want to put it. So I had to ease myself out of the out of the situation and kind of avoid being cruel about it, but it just wasn't for me anymore. Um, you know, it's it negative people can be energy draining, you know, destructive in your life, like you know this kind of, and and often an overbearing presence because of what they're doing. They're causing such extreme um, feelings within you that they they kind of by, bypass all the other people in your life who are just normal interactions or positive interactions every day and you can't let that happen like don't let the neg that negativity um because it can cause anxiety as well like if you're walking on eggshells and eggshells and it can worsen your your um your mental health you know and just it's it's up to you to eliminate the negative presence um and it's up to you to multiply the positive ones and to know if even if you have to write a list at home and and work through the, the positive and negative people in your life um do it because it's it'll benefit you so much um so what would i characterize myself as um i, I might be changing slightly i think but my outlook is can be overly overly negative at times it, that comes with the mental health so that comes with the the uh the depression the bipolar anxiety whatever it is like i'm trying to change um uh, uh, but when I'm comfortable with a person, I kind of can tend to, can, can kind of, um, I allow myself to moan a bit more. So Josh knows all about that. Um, I can, I can flip between the two, I think. Um, but I, I do know that I can give good, positive advice when needed. And I, 
I'm going to try like and I try all the time just to be a positive influence on people's lives and I think I'm getting better at that you know um through this like through this odd time I've kind of re I've reached out as much as I needed to uh, to the positive influences so I've drawn from that and I th that's why I think I'm dealing with it better than I thought it would um when I am positive I can draw I could drop some nuggets um of of advice I think I can anyway other people will be able to tell you that but I I do think I have um you know like talk about emotional intelligence I think I do have good emotional intelligence and I think I can be I think I can be a good influence on people as long as I'm in the right headspace um and you, and of course, before I finish this little segment, I need to thank everybody who's had to endure my uh, my negativity through the uh, through the years, and thanks to all those people who have been positive through the years as well. Because without without you, um, you know, things may have may have turned out a lot differently. And every single person, I'm not going to start naming names again, but you all know kind of you all know what you've done um and you all know how important you've been to me and how much you've helped me along so i was i was um having a look online doing a bit of surfing they don't call it that anymore do they surfing the web um and i being the hack that I, that I am i was looking up some ideas that i could talk about that were just a, that were a little bit a uh, little bit fun that weren't mental health um kind of connected uh and so i didn't really know what to type in so i was just typing in some kind of uh, nothing specific but certain you know keywords kind of find some stuff and uh so i came across this great now let me just say this i'm not having a go with this list uh this is from podcast.co <laughs> I'm sure it's dot com. It just doesn't say it. Um, so I, I came across this list of fifty things. Where's where's the headline? Fifty podcast ideas you should try. Okay. So I thought, right, I'll have a look through these fifty podcast ideas I should try. Now listen, some of these are absolutely great. Some of these I've, you know, ideas I've heard in in other podcasts and they've been very entertaining. Uh, but some of these, I think, some of these, if I think what I would be like doing them um would be shocking bad kind of idea for me to do okay so i i've listed i've taken out a list of if i'm looking i'm kind of guess around 12 or 13 from this i'm not going to go through all 50 because like i say some of them are pretty obvious they talk about true true crime um they talk about historical uh podcasts different things like that which obviously are great but just some of the ones that i think would be dodgy if i did them okay so number two on the list is this is crazy right Find films slash books you haven't seen, then guess what you think will happen. Okay, so it says like, think of films that everyone has seen or books that everyone has read that you haven't and make predictions on what will happen and give your opinions. Think of films that are, are notoriously bad, watch them and describe bad moments to the audience. Now the second part of that, I can get on board, right? But the first part, can you, like, I, right, just take, right, what's a really famous film I haven't seen? Um... Okay, maybe don't go really famous, right? We'll, uh, we'll just, okay, I'll, I'll tell you what, we'll talk, say Batman v Superman. No, don't say that, because obviously it's Batman v Superman. That's a, the giveaway in the title. That's like snakes on a plane. Someone asking what it's about. Well, it's about snakes on a plane. The, just, if I haven't seen a film, that's a very, it's a very popular film, right? And, okay, no, forget about film, actually. I'm making this too complicated. Game of Thrones, right? Just guess what it's about. Like, that'd be just... That'd be bizarre. Like, just give predictions on what will happen, and then give your like give your opinions on what will happen. Um. There's also it mentions here about find f films or books you know you'll hate, then either watch or read them and debate it with a super fan. That's that's all kind of bad. Uh, they give pa Harry Potter here as the example. I I think that would be a dreadful um, idea to do the Harry Potter thing because some people are really passionate about it. It's like people, and some people will know this from recent experiences. It's like people talking to me about the Beatles. I'm just insufferable, you know. Um, but but that 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 struck me as interesting as just guessing what something's about. Uh, number five: interview taxi drivers. Imagine that, like, 
I think like I think it means, you know, obviously going to them and like whether you've got your recording device or yeah, like it says there is actually something called the Taxi Tapes podcast. Um a podcast that follows the experience of a New York taxi driver, which would probably be quite interesting, but I I imagine me uh going into um Church Street in Athlone here and getting in a taxi and saying, "Can I record you for a podcast?" and then just doing the whole thing that Peter Kay does, you know that, uh, have you been busy? What time you handle? You know that kind of thing? I don't know why I talked to the taxi driver about. Um, they're just, uh, it would be so awkward, I think, for me. Uh, some people would probably be Delia, but I just think I'd be, I'd be dreadful. Um, number nine, right? Describing ob objects slash brands for people to guess, right? So this is really bizarre because it says, Describe your phone. Try and be as vague as possible to make it difficult for people to guess. Describe a can of Coke. Not only do people have to guess the object, they also have to guess the brand. Describe something more abstract like the moon, etc. <laughs> the moon. Um, but, it, you know, it gives examples of then a, a podcast that does these things like... I just can't, like, this is just my opinions, by the way. You might all love this and might get on board with it. But I can't imagine something as dull as me. You know, I, I'm guessing it means that should be two people here. So, so I'm going to do this. Do you know that? I'm going to get Josh on here and I'm going to start describing cans of Coke and see if it is interesting or if it's just absolute ridiculous, ridiculously bad. Um, yeah, it's just... Uh, uh, Describe a can of Coke. Describe the moon and be a. How can you be vague about the moon? Like, you know, it's in the sky and it's circular. Oh, it's the moon or it's the sun, one or the other, and that's the end of the game. Um, okay. So number twenty-four, narrate yourself doing basic tasks. Right. So narrate other people walking past your house. <laughs> what a creep! Or people you see in a night out. How creepy is that? Like, you narrating. Like imagine me on a right, it's been a while. But imagine me on a um, on a night out into a, ni a nightclub in town here, okay? And I I'm I'm taking it like you don't narrate it at the time because the sound is going to be awful and that. But narrate people you see on a night out. How that is really creepy behaviour. That's kind of stuff that gets you arrested. Never mind the podcast. But then actually, when you think about it. That'd be an interesting podcast, because then you'd be like, right, I was out narrating, um, you know, I was describing some young one uh, that I was admiring, and then I went to jail. Not jail, that's a very American word. But went to went to the, the Garda station, because I was describing her so closely to her face. <laughs> and narrate songs with what you believe their meaning is. Well, I suppose that's okay. Yeah, I I think that's what that would actually be quite interesting. That's just dissecting a song or a piece of art. That's fine. Narrate buying shopping or washing your car. Oh my god, I never actually when I was doing research, I never read that third piece. Can you imagine? Imagine you were just talking about washing your car. Jesus, how exciting that would be. Hemorrhaging listeners. Um, number twenty six. We have. What have we got here? We've got narrate from people who don't know what's going on. So. Get someone unfamiliar with ballet to watch ballet and explain what's going on. <laughs> My explanation would be it's ballet is what's going on. Get someone who isn't a football fan to discuss the difference between the teams with no research. Get someone who isn't a football fan to discuss the difference between the teams with no research. That's ridiculous. Just get someone who doesn't like football and just to kind of say why one team is good and one team is bad i suppose well that might be all right i don't know the ballet thing is weird i know they're only using ballet as an example but just get them to describe what's going on i would say there's people dancing in the story some of this stuff would be really short podcasts i think number 28 find people with the same name as each other and interview them this is my favorite one right because create a podcast focusing on the similarities between the people why would there be similarities between the people based on their names? It doesn't make any sense. And then, like, create a podcast focusing on the differences between the people. Maybe they're completely different people because they're from completely different backgrounds. The things they have in common is their names. That's the whole point of it. Um, 
find out how all of them got their name. Um, explore each other's each person's name history. God, I think I'll give that one a miss. That's, that's saying it's so boring. Um, interview anyone. Sorry, number thirty-seven. Interview anyone. Comma. <laughs> it's just anyone. Like randomers on the street. Okay, so interview people in your work. Interview people in the local takeaway. Interview people sat next to you on a train. That's mad. It like that's like saying interview people who could very poss possibly smash you with a headbutt. Interview people in your local takeaway. I think the thing about the local takeaway is a lot of the time you're going into the local ta takeaway it's, it's people are on levels of drunk and you ask them to interview them they're going to think there's something very suspicious going on they, they're not going to see it as an innocent thing where you're recording a podcast because you could say you're re recording a podcast but they don't know that number 38 interview people who are the same full stop interview people with the same birthday as you well they're not the same that's just people with the same birthday interview people with the same first name interview people who have the same job I mean, the job thing might be interesting enough. First name and birthday, nah. Uh, number 39, ask people if they know how to do certain things, such as if they know how to ride a bike, solve <laughs> solve equations, tame lions, etc. Tame lions, are you... Um, that'd be like me going up in a... That's a tractor moving past me. Um, that would be me going up to Martin and training and saying, do you know how to tame a lion? Tame lions? Who asks people can they tame lions? Uh, find out where they learned their skill from and who taught them uh, for others to follow. Ask people what common things they can't do that others can. For example, oh, listen to this list. Tie shoelaces, whistle, cook pasta. They're the three examples they've given us. I mean, wow, like... Ask people common things they can't do that others can. For example, tie shoelaces, whistle, cup. If you're asking an adult that can they tie shoelaces, you are going to get that head boy we've been talking about. Um, whistle. I got to hate whistling. Have I told people that? Martin knows because he's always whistling at me. But I can't stand it. Although I do love to cook pasta and I know how to do it. Um, number 41. Do household chores and let people guess what you're doing. Record yourself cleaning up. Record vacuum sounds, scrubbing sounds, stuff like that. Record yourself installing a new TV. What? Record yourself opening the box, plugging it in. Jesus. Record yourself walking the dog. Record the dog barking, shaking the lead. So record you're just doing day to day. That's dull. Now, you, nobody wants to listen to that. People want to be taken out of their ordinary lives. Not to have to listen to someone having a bloody piss. Sorry. <laughs> I, was, I was going to try and think of something clever and I just my brain stopped. So, number 42, record an interview in your apartment building or on the street. Knock on your neighbor's doors and ask them to tell their most interesting stories. Oh, my God. I couldn't do that. That's that's nightmare fuel, that is. Call, just knocking on someone's doors or ringing the bell and they'd come out and I'm like, um, can you tell me a story? That's kind of weird, isn't it? Find out where they were born, why, and then they moved to the street. You'd probably get some interesting content. It's just, for me, that would be the worst um thing that i could do to myself but i probably learn from it you know and improve as a human zero okay number 47 oh this is good as well this one zero punctuation tell stories chat with friends and interview guests all while not stopping for a breath <laughs> hence no punctuation uh switch it up go in reverse order and punctuate every single word how irritating would that be for a listener if you were doing that punctuating every word in a question oh god or, he, or doing the other way where you talk about the podcast and then you don't take a breath and it gets very annoying because all you do is do this and do this and do this and do this and do this why would you do that to, to your listeners i i love my listeners i want more people to listen i want more people to tune in i'm not going to get that from being an annoyance to them um He'd be like, have you heard that weekly, weekly podcast? It started out so well about the mental health and had guests on and stuff. And then he hasn't, he hasn't taken a breath in four episodes. You know, um, what's the, oh, you're on to the last one. So the 50, oh, here, this, this is the one that you'll, uh, do you know what? I think I should do a bonus episode every week of this one. Okay. Sorry, I'm just stretching. I sit so awkwardly and when I'm doing this podcast, I need to make myself more comfortable. But so this one is ASMR, right? 
We all know what ASMR is, right? Hope we do, because I'm not. It's the... Uh, open the fridge. Take out the milk. See? It's really creepy. I spell it. I spell it ASMR C-R-E-E-P. Um, when I do it. So it's uh, it's Autonomous Sensory Meridian Response. ASMR for short is a relaxing way to communicate with your listener. Speak softly and cover a range of different topics, such as makeup, poetry, etc. Use props to help immerse your listeners into the full ASMR experience. Props. Okay. Um, so it says actually the cut you covered in one episode, which makes sense. I didn't actually see that when I was doing this part. But, you know, the, the advice to whisper gently into your, to your, um, to your listeners, you know, which I, um, I don't know, I, I think you have to have a certain voice for that, you know, I think you have to, or uh, even if it's a, not a certain voice, I think it's a certain persona for it, if you know what I mean, so I think, uh, I don't think it would work with me, I think you, you all know me now, the, the same listeners would all know me now, so if it's like, if I was like, ask See, it's just, it doesn't sound pleasant with my voice. Um, I think with some voices it might. Uh, I'm, I've never tried the ASMR uh, experience, but I've been told there's all sorts though. It's not just voices, it's people eating, you know, apples and things like that. It's, you know, people get a kick out of it or find it relaxing. And Do you know what actually I really do like actually? Now I'm sure there's no podcast about it. Actually, it's podcast about everything to be fair. I really like the sound of rain. Now, it doesn't necessarily have to... I love it on the window above my bed, but it doesn't necessarily have to be on a roof or anything like that. You know when you're standing outside and it's raining just heavy enough for you to hear it on the stones, on the ground or on the in the grass or wherever, whatever's around you, as long as everything else is quiet? I love that sound, and I think that sound is kind of a sound I could sleep to. Um, So, I can kind of see where they're coming from in it, but I don't think I'd find the get the experience from a, a a voice. I don't think that that's my way of relaxing. So I I hope you enjoyed that little uh, little trip, um, down podcast dot com, uh, to see what they're giving me advice on. I might actually do a couple of them for the crack one of the days if we if we're still guestless for the next while. I might do it. Um, but like I said in my little ASMR piece there, any podcast, any questions for next week, please send them to us. Uh, join us on Saturdays if you haven't joined us. We're having some good good fun over there. We have a regular little crew over there that we've, we're really, really liking the interaction with. Um, it's something different. You can hear me butcher a song. It's all good. It's good crack. Um, so yeah, if you do have that qu- if, a question, DM us at SowJ got in contact with us just sent us an old text and we got through an, a nice question from him and really enjoyed doing it so thanks again for that question jake really appreciate it and appreciate your uh your listening um you're listening you listening sorry um of course shout out to john the man uh with the golden gun i'm running out of things to say like i'm, I'm just like i'm always saying the man with the iron mask i should have saved that for next week that's gone now as well um, th- thanks to John for all his work behind the scenes and for his great, it, you know, great support on the Saturdays. Uh, um, he always uh, contributes some good stuff. He always tells me what he's been watching or listening to, which, which is great because it saves me thinking nobody cares about my recommendations. Uh, <laughs> so that's good. Uh, John's family, shout out to them, and of course to um, the lovely Megan for uh, her continual support and her sharing, and you know. Um, like I said before, keep keeping John the straight and narrow and getting him out there on his bike because he won't do it on his own. Um, thanks to Jer again for the class poster. Um, I love it. I actually moved just to give you some a little uh, a little insight. I'll take a picture one of the days, but um, I actually moved the Reservoir Dogs. 
poster slightly in on the wall so I could give Network its prime location. So the two films with the prime location are 12 Angry Men and Network and they're both Sidley Lumet films um, because they're both in my top five favourite films of all time. Um, thanks to my mother, uh, to my father and my grandfather as ever. Um, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Weekly Weekly. Um, all subscriptions are greatly appreciated because it gets us into other people's pages and things like that. Uh, we're on Facebook, the Weekly Weekly. Follow us there. Join, invite your friends. Uh, we're on Instagram, Weekly the Weekly, and no, it's not. It's Weekly the Weekly and Twitter, Weekly underscore there. But you will obviously find us on the Weekly Weekly if you just type that in. Uh, we're available on Spotify, Apple, Anchor, Google Podcasts, Breaker, Overcast, Pocketcast, and Radio Public. I'd just like to know if anybody's listening. If you are listening, just give us a show. If you're listening to anything, listen to it on anything other than Spotify and Apple. Actually, I know Paul listens to it on Google Podcasts, but if you're listening to it other than that on any other ones, just let us know. Because um, it's just interesting to see. Uh, some of these I may not have to shout out. Um, and I'll save my voice. Even though I'll be not exactly... No, I was going to say I won't be talking to anyone later on. I will. <laughs> uh, make it sound so sad there. This is the only time I talk during the week. Um, so that's it for another week. Uh, I have an idea for next week. I'm really on the fence about it. I've been told I should do it by a couple of people. Uh, a couple of people who I trust completely. Uh, I trust their advice and they think it's a good idea I think it might be a little bit egotistical I haven't spoken to John about it if John shoots down the idea well then forget about it then uh, um, yeah thanks everyone uh, for your continued listens we want to get back into the swing of things soon and we will get back into the swing of things soon and we'll be having some deadly guests on and I'm I, I'm not joking when I say I've over 10 people written on a list so I've 10 podcast episodes sorted out. I won't have to talk anymore. How great is that? Um, I just had to ask one question and sit back and listen to interesting people talk about interesting things and giving me a new interesting advice. I can't wait for it. I'm off to drink some tea as it is 5 to 8 on a Tuesday morning. Quite frosty out there this morning. People will probably blame Bill Gates for that too. Um, uh, yeah, listen, have a good week. Uh, see you Saturday if you're tuning in for that. And if not, I'll listen to you. Or no, you, you listen to me. <laughs> I'll talk to you next Wednesday. All right. Take care. All the best. Bye-bye.